Reroof is a very much a, a community project, I feel. It's not really mine or hers. It's especially now that we're going nonprofit, it kind of belongs to everybody. Our company did start as, as a website. However, as we got more involved in the community and community projects and surfboard recycling and, and outreach, we decided that uh, you know that was that was more of our business model than a web-based model. So um, it's been completely essential to our growth and, and to the direction that we're taking right now. One of the reasons I like working with Megan is she actually did ask me what I thought. She asked me sort of my advice on a couple topics and just the fact that she was willing to kind of keep that open mind I think is a really good indicator because I really think the first step is being willing to change business models and really reflect on, you know, what you're actually doing based on assessments. So right now the students are developing um, a project on sustainability and surfing and they've come up with a model that is very similar to RERIP, so collecting boards and then finding different uses for them, so the reuse model. In the surfboard cradle to grave that I did, I had an estimate of the um, carbon footprint of a common surfboard and it was something like about 450 pounds of carbon dioxide are released in the production and uh, use of a surfboard. So that includes um, ding repair and maintenance as well as actual manufacture. So the students were actually able to show that there was a decrease in carbon emissions based on that reuse scenario. They calculated, you know, so re-rip, you have to have a truck that drives around and picks up the boards. So that's producing carbon emissions, right? However, you have all these surfboards that are being reused. So instead of people having to buy new surfboards, they're having boards that are already produced. What I'm hoping is that Tobias and you know some of the leaders of the project will want to keep it going and if we could sustain a program up here then we have San Diego and San Francisco now involved and that will just help it continue to grow along the coastlines. Well one reason that I think education is so important with and, 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 and pulling in the energy and the passion and the motivation of students is then they become the agent for change when they graduate not only on the campus changing the campus but wherever they go whether they go to industry whether they go to nonprofits whether they start their own companies whether they go uh, work for the government they can now take that knowledge and that confidence that they have and life cycle thinking approach and become change agents wherever they go we started in the community of Solana Beach and that's kind of been our, our growing point where we've we've tested out a lot of our, our processes and you know it's done a lot of fun, community fundraisers and a community outreach and kind of just you know, seen how, how everything is, is gonna work. It was very good timing. Um, what happened was we started the website and then Clark Foam went out of business and Clark Foam was making probably 90% of the surfboard blanks, which is what's inside of the surfboard. And Clark Foam had just monopoly on that, frankly, up until, um, I forget what date it was, they called it Blank Monday. And he just shut down the business with no notice or anything, and um, there had been reports that there's people who had got cancer from working around the foam, and um, there was a lot of pollution in the local environment there, and um, no fault at all to anybody, but that's just kind of the nature of the chemicals and of the foam that we all demand in our surfboards. So um, after that, there was kind of this renaissance of green and surfing, and there was businesses started to make better foam, cleaner foam, cleaner resins, you know, different kinds of um, cloths, you know, hemp cloths were starting to use bamboo cloth instead of fiberglass cloth. Then coupled with that, you have kind of this, you know, kind of global mainstream green movement. So it just was, you know, we kind of fit in boom, boom, boom with what kind of the direction I thought people were going. I think one of the most important things in sustainability is that is interconnectivity and community. I just think just in a social sense, if you have a stronger social fabric, people's lives are a lot better overall if they have a really kind of vibrant community around them. There's a lot of opportunities for cross-collaboration um, where we can learn from, from what other people are doing outside the surf industry. They can learn from us and possibly in the future, our materials can be used for other applications. I've found that uh, in, in trying to s spread the knowledge and, and create compatibility and uh, working with people like ReRip and shapers that are interested in recycling, it's just, it's expanded the people that have learned about our product and about the process, which is the biggest part about this is educating people so they understand that a bag like this, <laughs> scrap, 
can get turned into usable material right here. Yeah, there's a cup. Here's some blank parts. Here's some packaging parts from a, a computer. So basically that's the knowledge that needs to get out there is that this stuff is recyclable and can now be turned into surfboard blanks and other products. I've had some pretty good feedback with people that are using my greener boards. It's, um, it's cool. It's, they're really stoked on it because it makes them feel like I'm contributing here, you know, like it, it makes people feel good to use green products. And um, I wouldn't say that people be, feel bad or maybe they do when they're using <laughs> not green products, but it's just how it's been for a long time. Positive social benefits and even the positive environmental benefits that indirectly come from surfing, I think outweigh the downsides of surfing. And I think that, you know, if you expand that time to two million surfers around the world, I think it's a, it's a strong force for good. Today we're uh, we're actually you know in the process of becoming a nonprofit or uh, going to become a 501c3, and we're focusing a lot on uh, surfboard recycling, uh, research and development. Uh, we'd like to obtain some grants so we can really scale what we have in regards to surfboard recycling. Our main role is going to be bringing people together on all spectrums of business, uh, whether it be inside or outside the surf industry, and just to raise awareness, to open discussion, to have. Um, a good conversation about what we're doing and, and to talk about how we can do it better.